Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and Chag Sukkot Sameach. Welcome to Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this this is the recording for Saturday, October 19th, 2024, and it is the month of Tishri, the 17th day, and the year is now 5785. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Well, we are celebrating Sukkot. We've got some announcements to make. Uh, in the upcoming week, it's going to be a little bit busier than normal. Now, we have ended one of the Bible studies. Uh, this year has been a busier year than normal because we're actually, we've been doing three Bible studies. Uh, we've been doing our main Bible study, as you know, and then two additional bi Bible studies, the Tanakh and the Passion Translation. But last week, we completed the Passion Translation. So now we are down to the main one and the Tanakh. So in the upcoming week, as far as the Bible studies go, uh, we will be reading uh, from the New American Standard Bible, which is our main Bible study. We will be completing the book of Job, chapters 23 to 42. The Tanakh, we're actually going to cover two, uh, two books, and they're actually small, so um, it's not going to be anything overwhelming. Uh, so we're, we'll be completing all of the book of Joel, all four chapters, and nine chapters of the book of Amos. So, so we'll be covering two books in the Tanakh, and that's within uh, the, prop, this, the section known as the Nevim, also uh, known as the Prophets. So also in the upcoming week, we are, we are celebrating Sukkot, um, and as I've been talking about Sukkot, leading into Sukkot, um, I think a lot of us have been apprehensive because of the way Sukkot ended last year. And we've been praying for an end to this war, an end to the crisis, the crisis um, in, the, in, in actually the Middle East right now because of what has happened and, and how, the, how terrorists have actually ignited uh, an all-out war um, over there, and um, we've been praying for an end to this. We've been praying for um, the return of the hostages, which there's still hostages being held in the in the Gaza Strip, um, and there has been a turn. As I am recording this, now you know things happen on a day-to-day -day basis here. Um, the IDF has actually eliminated the mastermind that was behind the attack in October 7th. So Yayar Sinwar has been eliminated, um, which takes Hamas's leadership, as far as we know, to nothing. Now, you know the these groups like Hezbollah and Hamas and the Houthis are proxies of Iran. So Iran quickly sometimes replaces these, these leaders that they had in place. I'm not so sure that uh, that's going to happen this time, and we can pray that that, it, that is all dwindled. I did watch um, Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech and his, his call out to the Gazan people um, that, that, you know, Israel's trying to free them, too, of the terrorism. So if, you know, they will cooperate and, and release the hostages, things will go well with them, too because they'll be free. So we need to continue to pray for an end to this situation and the return of the hostages. And so peace and healing can truly begin in, in the Holy Land. So that was a turn of events. So definitely um, well worth mentioning in the announcements that I have for you today. Now, by the time this is posted, I, there could be a whole lot of other things happening as well, hopefully for the good. Um, 
things are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a fluid situation, so to speak. So please keep Israel in prayer. Also keep our nation here in prayer. As you know, we are walking on eggshells here as we get closer and closer to our election and we see evil rising up uh, amidst a lot of um, mourning and loss from hurricanes. Uh, there's been so much going on in this nation between hurricanes and fires and those sorts of things. But please pray for our nation as well. Pray for the United States of America that they get a righteous, godly leader in place. Um, so those that are out uh, in, in the nations, please keep, keep our country in prayer. And we thank you for praying for our nation. Now, in the upcoming week, I mentioned the Bible studies. Uh, there's a lot more going on because we are in Sukkot. So we will be having a midweek, well, actually probably two, Tuesday evening, I will be posting Hoshana Raba. And then out here in the diaspora, as I've been explaining, the last day of, of, of Sukkot is in, in the Holy Land, actually encompasses both Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah. Out here in the diaspora, it's two days. So October 25th will be the end of, actually at sundown, will be the end of Sukkot, if you're tying in Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah. Sorry, I had a pause it there. I don't know if that was a plane or a helicopter, but I live out in the sticks here. And that is quite unusual for um, something that, for an aircraft to go over here and shake my whole house. So sorry about that. Had a pause and you might have even heard that on the recording. That might show up. I'm not sure. But that's what that was. Also, as I mentioned, when we complete the Torah cycle for the year, um, <clears throat> this this year's a little bit differently um, because we will not be doing that uh, final Torah portion on a Shabbat. We would be doing it actually on Simchat Torah, and then right the next day, on, on Saturday the twenty sixth, we will begin the Torah cycle over again with Parshat Bereshit in the beginning. So we get to read the Torah all over again, and it is such a treasure to, to do that uh, and to begin all over again and refresh, refresh all the wonderful stories in the Torah and about our ancestors and our people. So that is pretty much the announcements. Oh, also Tuesday evenings, we, we continue to meet and we meet every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. You are welcome to join us. I try to remember to post the announcements. There was issues with Facebook and posting the announcements. So for a time I wasn't, and then I started posting them again, and I keep forgetting now because I'm not in the habit of doing it. So if you do not have the call-in information or the website and you would like to join us, uh, you can reach out to me, and I'll be glad to get you that information. The United States has one number um, for all of the United States and the access code, so it's very simple. And, and our number is a dedicated channel for our ministry. I had been on um, the prayer line. There was a prayer line. There was a 24-hour uh, urgent prayer uh, with for all intercessors to come and pray as we were praying um, against uh, Hurricane Milton. Very, very powerful prayer line. And they also use freeconferencecall.com. So it's a pretty trusted platform. I do not like Zoom personally. Um, had a lot of issues with um, Zoom. It almost crashed my computer. And the other thing, we when we have our meetings, we cannot be limited to 45 minutes because sometimes 
we get into um, major discussions, major prayer. Um, when we teach class, that's not enough time. So unless you're a you're you're a business that that pays for that service, or um, like I have used it um, with work uh, working uh, as a contractor for an insurance company. Um, actually they get to be on longer, but the private individual does not. So for us, it doesn't really work. And freeconferencecall.com has been around for a very, very long time. So, uh, it is a trusted platform and we've actually been using it since 2020 when we actually started doing things online. We actually started with freeconferencecall.com. Um, and did a teaching on Tisha B'Av. Prior to that, we were doing ministry, like just doing posts and things like that and doing counseling, you know, doing some counseling, leading people to the Lord and chat and those kinds of things. And yes, we still do that as well, but um, we also have online services, so, which is really nice. So yes, you are more than welcome to join us on freeconferencecall.com Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Most recently, we've been meeting to actually to be supportive as, as the Ecclesia should be, um, to pray one for another. We always lift prayer requests up. So even if you can't join us and you would like the corporate body to pray for you for whatever uh, you you need prayer for you can certainly leave me a message and i'll be glad to pray for you just a word on that too as i scroll through my feed if i see that if i see that someone needs prayer i will pause and i do pray so if you see that i have put in the comments prayers lifted know that i have stopped and prayed for you because I've seen your prayer request. I always do that. And then I also get people that will um, contact me uh, individually in private messages, and, and I, I, I pray for them as well. So no problem with that. If you need prayer, I would uh, be glad to pray for you individually. But if you want corporate prayer, um, certainly leave me a message, and we, we will lift your name up in prayer on a Tuesday evening. Or just come join us. We have a nice fellowship. We have a nice little group of people that gather each week. So with that being said, I think that is the end of announcements. Um, I apologize if my voice gets a little hoarse. I'm still fighting with trying to get my full voice back all the, all the time. So it may come and go. So I realize I am, I am pausing it a couple times because I am kind of losing my voice at times. So without further ado, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us and do a full Shabbat service. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we just want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for this commanded feast, this modim, this appointed time when we can rejoice before you for all the good things that you have done for us in our history. In our own lives, you're an awesome and amazing God, and we're so grateful to you for who you are. We're grateful for the breath that you put in our lungs every day, and thank you for another day. That is a gift in and of itself. And Father God, we thank you for Shabbat. We thank you that you have taken this day and sanctified it as holy. And we are here to rest in you on the seventh day, as you gave us that perfect, perfect example by resting on the seventh day. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to show us what is important for us to grasp from, from this week's Shabbat, to integrate it into our very being. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us. You are always welcome here. Father God, we thank you for all that you do. 
We give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name that is above all names, the name of our mighty Lord, Savior, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Messiah, Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. And just to note, he came to Tabernacle with us. This is Sukkot. This is when it is believed that our Lord and Savior was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's praise God. We thank you, Lord, for Yeshua. We thank you, Yeshua, for coming and doing what you did for us so that we could be redeemed and we could be with you forever. Amen. So Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but this seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you nor your son, your daughter, your male servants, your female servants, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. This is the seventh day we are, you know, everyone in the world is basically following a Gregorian calendar so that we can communicate with each other and what have you. So the Gregorian calendar, the first day of the week starts on a Sunday. And the end of the week, the, the seventh day, the last day of the week is indeed Saturday. That is Shabbat, the seventh day of the week. Say with me now the Lord's greatest commandment. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Makuto Leolam Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontless between your eyes and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Yeshua stated the second greatest commandment is this, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself, the entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah is a standing prayer, um, standing before God. And um, we are going to do the, because we're in Sukkot in a major holiday, uh, we are actually going to do the entire Amidah, not just um, three of the blessings, but all, all of them. So we're going to start with God of history. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God and God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and revered God, the, the, the most high God, who bestows loving kindnesses, the creator of all things, who remembers the good deeds of the patriarchs, and in love will bring a redeemer to their children's children. For his name's sake, O King, helper, Savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, the shield of Abraham. God of nature, you, O Lord, are mighty forever. You revive the dead and you have the power to save. You sustain the living and loving with loving kindness. You revive the dead with great mercy and you support the fallen. Heal the sick, set the free, set free the captives and keep faith with those who sleep in the dust who is like you o doer of mighty acts who resembles you a king who puts to death and restores to life and causes salvation to flourish and you are certain to revive the dead blessed are you o lord who revives the dead 
the sanctification of God. We will sanctify your name in this world, just as it is sanctified in the highest heavens, as it is written by your prophet. And they call out to one another and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Blessed be the presence of the Lord from his place. In your holy words it is written, saying, The Lord reigns forever, your, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Throughout all generations we will declare your greatness, and to all eternity we will proclaim your holiness. Your praise, our God, shall never depart from our mouth, for you are great and holy God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy God. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy beings praise you daily. Selah. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy God. Prayer for understanding. You favor men with knowledge and teach mortals understanding. O favor us with knowledge, the undertaking, the understanding, and the insight that comes from you. Blessed are you, O Lord, the gracious giver of knowledge for repentance. Bring us back, our Father, to your instruction. Draw us near, our King, to your service, and cause us to return to you in perfect repentance. Blessed are you, O Lord, who delights in repentance. For forgiveness, forgive us, our Father, for we have sinned. Pardon us, our King, for we have transgressed. For you pardon and forgive. Blessed are you, O Lord, who is merciful and always ready to forgive. For deliverance from affliction, look upon our affliction and plead our cause, and redeem us speedily for your name's sake. For you are a mighty Redeemer. Blessed are you, O Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. For healing, heal us, O Lord, and we will be healed. Save us and we will be saved. For you are our praise. O grant a perfect healing to all our ailments for you. Almighty King, are a faithful and merciful healer. Blessed are you, O Lord, the healer of the sick of his people Israel. For deliverance from want, bless this year for us, O Lord, our God, together with all the varieties of its produce, for our welfare, bestow dew and rain for a blessing upon the face of the earth. O satisfy us with your goodness, and bless our year like the best of years. Blessed are you, O Lord, who blesses the years. For gathering of exiles, sound the great shofar. For our freedom, raise the ensign. To gather our exiles and gather us from the four corners of the earth. Blessed are you, O Lord, who gathers the dispersed of his people, Israel. For the righteous reign of God, restore our judges as in former times, and our counselors as at the beginning, and remove from us sorrow and sighing. Reign over us, you alone, O Lord, with loving kindness and compassion, and clear us in judgment. Blessed are you, O Lord, the King, who loves righteousness and justice for the righteous and proselytes. May your compassion be stirred, O Lord our God, towards the righteous, the pious, the elders of your people, the house of Israel, the remnant of their scholars, towards proselytes and toward us also. Grant a good reward to all who truly trust in your name. Set our lot with them forever so that we may Never be put to shame, for we have put our trust in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, the support and stay of the righteous for the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Return in mercy to Jerusalem, your city, and dwell in it as you have promised. Rebuild it soon in our day as an eternal structure and quickly set up in it the throne of David. Blessed are you, O Lord, who rebuilds Jerusalem for the Messianic King speedily cause the offspring of your servant David to flourish and let him be exalted by your saving power. For we wait all day long for your salvation. Blessed are you, O Lord, who causes salvation to flourish for the answering of prayer. Hear our voice, O Lord our God. Spare us and have pity on us. Accept our prayer in mercy and with favor. For you are a God who hears prayers and supplications. Our King, Do not turn us away from your presence empty-handed. For you hear the prayers of your people Israel with compassion. Blessed are you, the Lord, O Lord, who hears prayer. For restoration of temple service, 
Be pleased, O Lord our God, with your people Israel, and with their prayers. Restore the service to the inner sanctuary of your temple, and receive in love and with favor both the fire offerings of Israel and their prayers. May the worship of your people Israel always be acceptable to you, and let our eyes behold your return in mercy to Zion. Blessed are you, O Lord, who restores his divine presence to Zion. Thanksgiving for God's unfailing mercies. We thank, we give thanks to you that you are the Lord our God and the God of our fathers forever and ever. Through every generation, you have been the rock of our lives, the shield of our salvation. We will give you thanks and declare your praise for our lives that are committed into your hands, for our souls that are entrusted to you, for your miracles with us and for your wonders and your benefits that are with us at all times, evening, morning, and noon. O oh, beneficent one, your mercies never fail. O oh, merciful one, your loving kindnesses never cease. We have always put our hope in you. For all these acts, may your name be blessed and exalted continually, our King forever and ever. Let every, thing, every living thing give thanks to you and praise your name in truth. O oh God, our salvation and our help, Selah. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, whose name is the Beneficent One, and to whom is fitting to give thanks. For peace, grant peace, welfare, blessing, grace, loving kindness, and mercy to us and to all Israel, your people. Bless us, our Father, one and all, with the light of your countenance. For by the light of your countenance, you have given us, O Lord our God, a Torah of life, loving kindness, and salvation, blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May it please you to bless your people, Israel, at all times and in every hour with your peace. That is the Amidah. Matabu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. And I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow and worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for time of favor, O God, in your great love. Answer me with the truth of your salvation. And at Sain, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. By Yom Hafu in that day, and it is said, and I will let me king over all the earth in that day, and I will be a Kad, and his name a Kad. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, Amen, in the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, Amen, in your lifetime and in your days and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, uplifted, and lauded, be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation, spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us, and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Naten Lanu, Devar Hakayim, Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctify be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Say with me now the Shehekienu, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehekienu Vekiamanu, Lazman Blessed are you, 
Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion of Sukkot, the Sabbath of Sukkot. In the ancient days, the high priest, known as the Kohen Gadol, sounded the shofar to gather Benaiah Israel to worship. We are going to sound a shofar now. In a moment, I'm going to pause it for you to listen to some praise and worship. If you've been following our ministry, you know we do not um, include the praise and worship in these recordings. There was many, many problems when we, we began to do online recordings, and we have heard of so many people that were actually losing their platforms for this reason alone. Um, so we just never did that. Uh, what I usually do, I post the scriptures, and then I will post a series of songs, which are suggestions to part one of Shabbat service. You can listen to any or all of them. And of course, if you have your own Shabbat praise and worship that you prefer to listen to or participate in, that's fine. Uh, the main deal is, is praise and worship is included in our service. Praise and worship is one of the most important elements of any service. We were created to praise and worship our creator. So yes, we do include praise and worship, just not in these recordings. So um, after I after the first set of songs that are posted, um, I also then will post part one and part two of this recording of the Shabbat services that, that are uploaded to both YouTube and Rumble, and then I will post another series of songs, which are suggestions to part two of Shabbat service. Now, yes, they have relented somewhat uh, since we started actually doing online ministry and posting, and now people are using music again in their, in their videos and such, like background and what have you. And yes, I, I guess I could do that. Uh, put a few songs in here and list and the uh, name of the artist. And it would certainly be much less posting for myself. It would, it would make life a lot easier because uh, I post to a lot of platforms. So I post to MeWe, I post to, to Gab, I post to USA.life, to both my timelines uh, in case because of algorithms and what have you. Um, that the people on the group are not actually seeing them. Uh, I post to Facebook and there's a lot of problems with Facebook shadow banning. Um, so I do limited posting to what uh, to Twitter uh, and those that are on an email list get the full uh, services in order. Um, and it's probably easier for, for those that are on the email list uh, because you know if you're on the email list, you're actually getting it. Um, I, it's kind of a hit or miss that people are seeing services like on places like Facebook that do very uh, do do a lot of shadow banning. So uh, that is one of the big reasons why I also included now on my timeline. I did it before, uh, be, but because we are severely shadow banned, I've had to do that in hopes that the members on my, uh, some of the members on the group are actually uh, seeing the posts. We have close to 2,000 members, and um, probably the high count might be like 19 or 20 people um, get to see what's even on the group. So we do know that we're being shadow banned. So that's the reason why uh, all the posts and, and why it's posted to both my timeline as well as the group. So um, I'm not going to change that um, the way. I do post, uh, and actually, another reason is if I suggested these songs and I actually put them in my recording and just mentioned, you know, it's from so and so, that's not going to give the artist credit where credit is due. 
So by you clicking onto that song that I have suggested to listen to, um, you're being redirected right to the artist's YouTube channel. And if they're monetized, and many of them are because this is what they do for a living, and this is their calling for the kingdom, um, you'll be redirected to their YouTube channel, and they will get the credit for your view. So that is the way it should be. We don't. We want to help our our musicians who bring us the anointed praise and worship songs. So that's an easy way that you can support them. And I'm just going to also mention. Many of them have hyperlinks where they you may be redirected to a website, uh, where or or a place where you can purchase their music. If you can help them out that way, I'm sure they would greatly appreciate that. And also, some of them have outreach ministries that they support. They they found uh, outreaches that need support, and if you if if it resonates with you uh, to join in their cause as well. And many of the musicians, praise and worship is their ministry, and many of them travel internationally. So if you can help them out at any time, again, I'm sure they would, would greatly appreciate that. So with that being said, we're going to pause for you to do some praise and worship. Uh, when you have done that, you, all you have to do is hit, you can, you can pause with me, um, and then you hit play. And we will be reading from the Torah portion and then the half Torah portion. We are also going to be reading the Hallel, um, which is Psalm 113 to 118 before we, we conclude part one. Now, this is not, again, in the order of where we are in the Torah cycle. Um, this is for the Sukkot. Shabbat for the Sukkot holiday. Actually, we have one parashat, one, one Torah portion left to read um, before we complete this cycle for this, this cycle reading of the Torah. And we will be doing that um, at Simchat Torah. And then the next week's Shabbat service, we're going to be, be beginning, as I mentioned, uh, Parashat Barashit in the beginning. Um, that is the beginning of the whole Torah cycle again. So that's part one here um, and a little bit of additional information for you. Uh, when we come back, we will do the opening of part two and then we will be reading from the Brit Kadasha, the New Covenant. We have some scriptures there to read and then we will do an altar call and a closing of this week's services. So we're going to pause it now and then we will come back. Okay. Um, this week's Torah portion, uh, we've got three areas that we're going to read from. The first is Exodus chapter 33, verse 1 through 34, verse 35. Then Ananias said to Moses, leave, get out of this place, you and the people that you brought out of the land of Egypt into the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your seed. I will send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. And up into a land flowing with milk and honey. But I will not move within the midst of you so that I do not destroy you along the way, for you are a stiff necked people. When the people heard these dreadful words, they mourned, and no one put on any ornaments. Adonai said to Moses, Say to Benai Israel, You are a stiff necked people. If I were going up among you for one moment, I would consume you. Take off your ornaments so that I may consider what to do to you. So Benai Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. And remember, they had um, worshipped the golden calf, and um, this is this is at all after that. Show me your glory. Now Moses used 
refused to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. So what happened, everyone who saw Adonai would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would arise and stand everyone at the door of his own tent and look after Moses until he had gone into the tent. After Moses entered, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door, and he would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all rose up and worshipped every man at the entrance of his own tent. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. So we know Moses truly had a relationship with God, just as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had. Noah spoke to God. You can see how people can have a relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Then he would return to the camp, but his servant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. So Moses said to Adonai, you, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my eyes. Now then, I pray, if I have found grace in your eyes, show me your ways so that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider also that this nation is your people. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest, he answered. But then he said to him, if your presence does not go with me, don't let us go up from here. For how would it be known that I or your people have found favor in your sight? Isn't it because you go with us that distinguishes us from all the people on the face of the earth? And I answered Moses, I will also do what you have said, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then he said, please show me your glory. So he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you and call out the name of Adonai before you. I will, be, I will be gracious towards whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will be merciful. That's God decides that. But he also said, you cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Then Adonai said, see a place near me. He will stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you will see my back, but my face will not be seen. Chapter 34, Adonai said to Moses, carve for yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones. Now we know what happened at the first ones. Moses threw them and broke them after seeing and I, Israel, worshiping the golden calf. Okay. So carve for yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write upon them the words that were on the first tablet, tablets which you broke. Be ready by the morning, come up to Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout the entire mountain. Even the flocks and herds must not graze in front of that mountain. So he carved two tablets of stone like the first. Then Moses rose up early in the morning, went up on Mount Sinai, as Adonai had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Then Adonai descended in the cloud, stood with him there, as he called on the name of Adonai. Now, now we're going to read the 13 attributes of God. Then Adonai passed before him and proclaimed, Adonai, Adonai, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, showing mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means leaving the guilty unpunished, but bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Then Moses quickly bowed his head down to the earth and worship. He said, If now I have found grace in your eyes, my Lord, let my Lord please go within our midst, even though I 
Jesus is to admit people, pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your own inheritance. The exclusive covenant. Then he said, I am cutting a covenant before all of your people. I will do wonders such as has not been done in all the earth or in any nation. All the people you are among will see the work of Adonai, for what I am going to do with you will be awesome. Obey what I am commanding you today. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites before you. Watch yourselves and make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, or they will become a snare among you. Instead, you must break down their altars, smash their pillars, and cut down their asher poles. For you are to bow down to no other god, because Adonai is jealous for his name. He is a jealous god. See that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. See, this is real important. And this is where, um, as they went into the promised land, um, as those of you know who have been following the Bible studies, they did not um, adhere to this 100%. And it became a snare to them. It became a problem. And, and a snare, meaning it lured them into practicing some of the things that the people of the land were doing, and they were not to be doing those things, because what they were doing was worshiping idols and things made with their hands, gold, gold images, silver images, images of wood. Um, they would sacrifice to them, sacrifice to false gods, demon gods, actually, um, and they were not to do that. So uh, Israel started participating along with, with, uh, with the, the people, the remnants in the land that they left. Um, as, as we know, God told them to destroy everything and everyone. So uh, basically knock down their Asher poles and their, pla their places of worship because they, these were not God, the real God. So, um, that did indeed become a snare for Israel. I also want to say this covenant that is being made with Israel, that God, God said he is making this covenant with Israel, is an unbreakable covenant. So those that practice replacement theology are, are practicing false, false doctrine because... God will never, ever break the covenant. God is not a covenant breaker, a, a vow breaker. And we can be glad that he is not and that, that he is God. He is sovereign and he has no need to break the co break covenants. It's people that break covenants and vows. God never does. And we can be glad that God doesn't change his mind on promises because our promise of eternal, uh, uh, you know, eternal life it, it could, could hang in the balance if God were to do that. No, God gave us Yeshua, and and by Yeshua's finished work on the cross, we can be saved through faith. And if God were to change His mind and say, "No, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody to be saved. I've had it with humanity," um, <laughs> and He could, He is God, but He is a faithful and true God, so He would never do that. Now the devil, on the other hand, would, would um, but he, but but there again, he's he's not God. God is a sovereign God. God would never break the covenant that He makes. His promises are true. His word is true. I just want to mention that. And there's a lot of people that get caught up into replacement theology, and no, it is false. And we can be glad we can be glad that it is because then we. Um, you know, anyone um, that wasn't in that original covenant, the, the Gentiles should be worried because then if God could break, if God could break covenant with with the Jewish people, then he would do it with, he could do it with anyone. I mean, like I said, he could because he's God, but he won't because he's faithful and he's true. And, and he is without sin. And sin cannot stand before a holy God. He is holy. 
So we don't, you know, God doesn't behave like men do, um, or or women. I'm just just saying men as in humanity. Um, that's not who God is. God is God. So let's go back to Exodus. See that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Otherwise, when they prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone will invite you and you will eat from their sacrifice. Do not take their daughters for your sons, for their daughters will prostitute themselves with their own gods and cause your sons to prostitute themselves with their gods. You are not to make for yourselves metal gods. You are to keep the feast of matzah for seven days. You are to eat matzah as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Aviv. Now, that is the month of Nisan. So that uh, Aviv, okay, um, Aviv here in the Bible is the original biblical name for that month. Now, all the Hebrew calendar months were changed in captivity in Babylon. So it then, Aviv then became Nisan. For in the month of Aviv, you came out from Egypt. So yes, we know that, you know, when we're looking here in modern modern times, we refer to Nisan. Um, and that was, a, that's actually a Rosh Hashanah. That's the birth of, of the nation when, when we came out of Egypt. So every firstborn of the womb is mine. And all your, all and from all your cattle, you are to sanctify the males, the firstborn of the oxen, sheep, the firstborn donkeys. You are to redeem with the lamb. But if you do not redeem it, then you are to break its neck. You must redeem all your firstborn sons. No one should appear before me empty-handed. Here we go again. For six days you will work, but on the seventh day you will rest. During plowing time and harvest, you must rest. You are to observe the Feast of Shavuot, which is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, as well as the Feast of Ingathering at the turn of the year. Sukkot, um, Sukkot is also called for the Feast of Ingathering, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Three times during the year, all your males are to appear before Adonai Elohim, God of Israel, for I'm going to cast out nations before you then enlarge your territory so no one will cover your land when you go up to appear before Adonai your God three times in the year. So, of course, we see that that is a problem. The land is still coveted today, even though the land belongs to Israel, says Almighty God. Uh, and actually, who are they fighting? Almighty God. Uh, they're not, they're not, you know, anyone else but God when they're doing these things and and trying to take the land away from from Israel God gave it to them as an inheritance God owns everything so he can decide who you know who gets what like he said I will be merciful to whom I will be merciful you know he's God he has a right and everything belongs to him we belong to him he created us so, yeah, they, they, they're fighting Almighty God when they're fighting Israel over the land. And it's not going to go well for anyone that is fighting God. <laughs> Let's face it. You are not to offer the blood of my sacrifice with Hamatz. Now, Hamatz is leaven uh, and one of the, you know, and actually that is yeast. Nor should this sacrifice of the Passover festival remain until morning. You are to bring the choicest first fruits of your land to the house of Adonai, your God. You must not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Then Adonai said to Moses, write these words, for based on these words, I have had a covenant with you and with Israel. So he stayed there with Adonai for 40 days and 40 nights. And he did not eat bread or drink water. He wrote in the tablets the words, the covenant, the 10 words, or also the 10 commandments. Now it happened when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. When he came down 
from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face was radiant because God had spoken with him. When Aaron and Albani Israel saw Moses, the skin of his face shone in rays, so they were afraid to come near him. I just want to say, Moses is a type and shadow of Yeshua. He's a shepherd, uh, so he's shepherding the people. But also, think about Mount Transfiguration, when Yeshua appeared radiant also. So here, here is like a foreshadowing of that. Um, but Moses called out to them, so Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterwards, all the night Israel came near, and he gave them all the mitzvah that Adonai had spoken to him in Mount Sinai. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But when Moses went before Adonai so that he could speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. When he came out and spoke to Benai Israel, what he was what he was commanded, Benai Israel saw the face of Moses and that the skin of his face glistened. So Moses put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with him. The next reading from the Torah portion is Leviticus chapter 22, verses 1 through chapter 23, verse 44. And I spoke to Moses, saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to separate themselves from the holy things of Benai Israel, which they consecrate to me, so that they would not profane my holy name. I am Adonai. Tell them, if any one of all your offspring throughout your generations approaches the holy things which Benai Israel consecrates to Adonai, while in a state of uncleanness that soul will be cut off from me before me, I am Adonai. None of the offspring of Aaron who has the Arot or has a discharge should eat of the holy things until he is clean. The Arot meaning leprosy. Whoever touches anything that is unclean by the dead or a man whose seed discharges from him or who touches any creeping thing that may make him unclean or a person who is unclean, whatever his uncleanness, the person who touches any such thing will be unclean until the evening and is not to eat of the holy things unless he has bathed his body in water. When the sun sets, he will become clean, and afterward he may eat of the holy things, because it is his food. A carcass, or what is torn by beasts, he is not to eat, becoming ugly by it. I am Adonai. Therefore, Kohanim shall keep, keep my charge, so that they do not become guilty of sin, and die, shall they profane it. I am Adonai who sanctifies them. No, layman is to eat from the holy offering. A foreigner living with the Kohanim or a hired servant is not to eat from the holy offering. But if a Kohen buys a slave purchased by his money, that one may eat from it. Also, those born in his house may eat his food. If a Kohen's daughter is married to a layman, she is not to eat from the gifts of the holy offerings. But if a Kohen's daughter is a widow, or divorced and has no child and has returned to her father's house, as in her youth she may eat from her father's food, but no layman may eat any of it. If anyone eats something holy unwittingly, then he is to add a fifth to it and give the holy offering to the Kohen. They are not to profane the holy offerings of Benai Israel, which they lift up to Adonai, so causing them to bear the iniquity that brings guilt when they eat the holy offerings. For I am Adonai who sanctifies them. And I spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all Benai Israel, and say to them, Whoever is from the house of Israel or one of the outsiders in Israel who brings his offering, whether it be any of their vows or any of their free will offerings that they present to Adonai for burnt offering, for you to be accepted, you are to offer a meal without blemish from the bulls, the sheep, or the goats. But whatever has a blemish, you are not to present for it will not be acceptable on your behalf. Whoever brings a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to Adonai to fulfill a vow or a free will offering either from the herd or the flock, it must be unblemished to be accepted. There must be no defect on it. The blind, injured, maimed, having an abnormal growth or festering or, or running sore, are not to be offered to Adonai 
or given as an offering by fire on the altar to Adonai. For a free will offering, you may present a bull or a lamb that, that has any deformity or lacking in its parts, but for a vow, it will not be accepted. Whatever has its testicles bruised, crushed, broken, or cut, you are not to offer to Adonai, nor are you to do so in your own land. Moreover, you are not to offer the food of your God from the hand of an outsider from any of these animals, for their corruption is within them. They have a defect. They will not be accepted on your behalf. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, When a bull, a sheep, or a goat is born, then it, then it is to remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day onward it will be accepted as the gift of an offering made by fire to Adonai. If it is a cow or ewe, you are not to slaughter it among, along with its young both in one day. When you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to Adonai, you are to present it so that you may be accepted. It is not, it, it is to, I'm sorry, it is to be eaten on the same day. You are to leave none of it until the morning. I am Adonai. So you are to keep my mitzvah and do them. I am Adonai. You must not profane my holy name, for I will be made holy among Benai Israel. I am Adonai. He makes you holy. who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai. Chapter 23, the Biblical Feasts. So now we're going to talk about all of the Biblical Feasts here in this chapter. Then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benai Israel and tell them, These are the appointed Moedim of Adonai, which you are to proclaim to be holy convocations. My Moedim work may be done for six days, but this seventh day is a Shabbat of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You are to do no work. It is a Shabbat to Adonai in all your dwellings. So here we are talking about Shabbat again. So you can see how important this is to God because it is mentioned more than once, multiple times actually. Pesach and the Feast of Matzah, these are the appointed feasts of Adonai, holy convocations which you are to proclaim in their appointed season during the first month. On the 14th day of the month in the evening, is Adonai's Passover. On the 15th day, the same month, is the Feast of Matzah to Adonai. For seven days, you are to eat matzah. On the first day, you are to you are to have a holy convocation, and you should do no regular work. Instead, you are to present a meal. You, you are to present an offering made by fire to Adonai for seven days. On the seventh day, is a holy convocation, and you are to do no regular work. Bikram and Shavuot, Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benai Israel and tell them when you have come into the land, which I give you, and reap its harvest, then you are to bring the omer or the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen. He is to wave the omer before Adonai to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Shabbat, the Kohen is to wave it. On the day when you wave the omer, you are to offer a male lamb without one that's one year old, as a burnt offering to Adonai, the grain offering with it should be two tenths of an ephah of spiced flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to Adonai for soothing aroma. Its drink offering with it should be a quarter of a gallon of wine. You are not to eat bread, roasted grain, or fresh grain until this same day, until you have brought the offering of your God. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Then you are to count from tomorrow after the Shabbat and the day that you brought the omer of the wave offering, seven complete Shabbatat, so that that would be seven weeks. Until the morrow after the seventh Shabbat, you are to count 50 days, and this is the counting of the omer, and then present a new grain offering to Adonai. You are to bring out of your houses two loaves of bread for a wave offering made of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour. They are to be baked with hamat, hamat, as first fruits to Adonai, you are to present along with the bread seven one year old lambs without blemish, one young bull, and two rams. They will become a burnt offering to Adonai with their meal offering and their drink offerings, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to Adonai. Also, you are to offer one male goat or sin offering and a pair of year old male lambs for sacrifice of fellowship offerings. 
the Kohen is to wave them with the bread of the first fruits of the wave offering before Adonai with the two lambs. They shall be holy to Adonai for the Kohen. You are to make a proclamation on the same day that there is to be a holy convocation and you should do no regular work. This is a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Now, when you reap the harvest of your land, you are to reap to the furthest corners of your fields or, get, or gather the, the gleanings of your harvest. Rather, you are to leave them for the poor and for the outsider. I am Adonai, your God. The fall festivals. So now we. this is the final fall festival. You know, as far as the seven commanded feasts of God. And then I spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benai Israel, saying, In the seventh month of the first day of the month, you are to have a Shabbat rest, a memorial blowing, a shofaro, a holy convocation. You are to do your regular work, and you are pre to present an offering made by fire to Adonai. Again, to remind you, this, it, when we're talking about the seventh month, I don't want to confuse anybody because when this is the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, Yom Teruah, um, we call it all those things. Um, actually, it is the first month, yes, of the civil calendar year. But when it's talking about this month in the Bible, it is the seventh month because that's the biblical calendar year and some some may call it the ecclesiastical calendar year and as we mentioned the month of aviv which later was turned into nisan is the first month of the year from the biblical calendar that's when israel became a nation when they came out of egypt they the exodus occurred in nisan so that's what you find when you read the bible but yes the civil calendar year, we do uh, celebrate the month, and, and we're talking about the month of Tishri here. We do set, we do celebrate the month of Tishri as the first day of the civil calendar year. And then I spoke to Moses, saying, however, the tenth day of, of this seventh month is Yom Kippur, a holy convocation to you, so you are to afflict yourselves you are to bring an offering made by fire to Adonai. You are not to do any work, any kind of work on that set day, for it is Yom Kippur, to make atonement for you before Adonai your God. For anyone who does not deny himself on that day must cut, must be cut off from his people. Don't you know that's like a 25 to 26 hour fast, generally. Now this year people were doing different types of fasts because we also had the Esther movement of the mall in Washington, D.C. And both, um, it was a prayer for the, for saving America and for also for Israel as well. There was prayer um, that took place for Israel. So um, people were doing longer fasts for that. Um, I know I was called to do an Esther fast for, for that weekend, which I, I, I definitely did. Um, th three days before Yom Kippur, well, e leading into Yom Kippur, it was a total of three days. And I broke fast actually that evening at, you know, at sundown on the 12th. Anyone who does, not, does any kind of work on that day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You should do no kind of work. It is a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It is to be a Shabbat of Shabbat, a Shabbat of solemn rest for you. And this year, this year, this year because um, Yom Kippur did land on Shabbat, it was a Shabbat of Shabbats, as we call it. Um, and you are you are to humble your souls on the ninth day of the month. In the evening, from evening until evening, you are to keep your Shabbat. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the night Israel, and say, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the Feast of Sukkot, for seven days to Adonai. And we're on the seventh, seventeenth of Tishri, so we are, we are, we're not quite in the middle. We're at the beginning part of um, 
of Sukkot. On the first day, there is to be a holy convocation. You are to do no laborious work. For seven days, you are to bring an offering by fire to Adonai. The eighth day will be a, a holy convocation to you, and you are to bring an offering by fire to Adonai. It is a solemn assembly. You should do no laborious work. These are the modim of Adonai, which you are to proclaim to be holy convocations, to present an offering by fire to Adonai, a burnt offering, a grain offering, a sacrifice, and a drink offering, each on its own day, besides those of the Shabbat of, of Adonai, and besides your gifts, all your vows, and all your free will offerings, which you give to Adonai. So on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you are to have gathered in the fruits of the land, you are to keep the feast of Adonai for seven days. The first day is to be a Shabbat rest, and the eighth day will also be a Shabbat rest. On the first day, you are to take choice fruit of trees, branches of palm trees, boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook, and rejoice before Adonai, your God, for seven days. You are to celebrate it as a festival to Adonai for seven days in the year. It is a statute forever. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it in the seventh month. You are to live in Sukkot for seven days. All the native born in Israel are to live in Sukkot, so that you are, so that your generations may know that I had the night Israel to dwell in Sukkot when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Adonai your God. So Moses declared to Benai Israel the Modim of Adonai. The final Torah portion is from the book of Numbers, chapter 12, uh, I'm sorry, verse 12 through 40. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is going to be kind of like a repeat. Okay, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, on the 15th day, the seventh month, you are to have a sacred assembly. You are not to do any of your work, and you're, you're to celebrate the feast to Adonai for seven days. You are to offer burnt offering by fire to Adonai. As a pleasing aroma, 13 young bulls from the herd, two rams, and 14 year old male lambs without defect, their grain offerings of fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah with each of the 13 bulls, two tenths with each of the two rams and one-tenth with each of the fourteen lambs, plus one male goat as a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, with its grain and drink offering. On the second day you are to offer twelve young bulls from the herd, two rams and fourteen-year-old male lambs without flaw, with their grain and drink offerings, with the bulls, rams, and lambs as appropriate by their number according to the regulations, plus one male goat as a sin offering, as well as the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the third day, offer 11 bulls to rams of 14-year-old male lambs without defect with their grain and drink offerings. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, the number specified in a male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the fourth day, 10 bulls to rams, and 14-year-old male lambs without flaw, their grain offerings and drink offerings, with the bulls, rams, and lambs by their number according to the regulations, and one male goat as a sin offering of the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, and 14 male one-year-old lambs without defect, with their grain and drink offerings by their number as specified, and one goat for sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, and 14 male lambs, a year old without defect with the bulls, rams, and lambs, their grain and drink offerings according to their number specified, and one goat for a sin offering with a regular burnt offering, and its grain and drink offerings. On the seventh day, seven bulls, two rams, and 14 male lambs, without defect a year old, plus their grain and drink offerings. For the bulls, rams, and lambs, according to the numbers specified, in addition to one male goat for sin offering, 
and the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offering. On the eighth day, there shall be for you an assembly. You are to do no regular work. You are to offer to Adonai a burnt offering, a fire offering, a pleasing aroma, one bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old without defect in their grain and drink offerings. With the bull, ram, and lamb corresponding to their number according to the regulations, and a goat for sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offering. You are to prepare these for Adonai at your modium in addition to your vow and free will offerings along with your burnt offerings, grain offerings, drink offerings, and fellowship offerings. So Moses told Benai Israel all that Adonai commanded Moses. Now that is our Torah portions for this service today. Now our half Torah portion, we've got two segments to read from as well. Um, we are going to go to the prophet Ezekiel, and we're going to go to chapters 38 to 39. Now this is actually very interesting, um, and we know that uh, this is also prophetic. Now the chapter prior to that is our famous chapter of the dry bones coming to life, and we can think about that as, you know, the church needs to come alive. Um, come to life. The church has actually been put to sleep. We need to wake up to the times that we're living in. So chapter 38 deals with the war of Gog and Magog. And that is also prophetic, you know, prophetically in the future, as we see the enemies of Israel gathering to go battle against Israel. I mean, we were looking at the alliances that have been taking place with Iran, and those are those alliances because Russia is one of them. Uh, the kings of the East. We've got North Korea playing around a little bit there with China. Um, so they are there. Um, and we know that, that Russia has become an ally to Iran, who is an enemy of Israel at this time the regime that's in place, not the people. Uh, we actually know that the Iranian people are being oppressed by this regime. Um, and that prior to 1979, when this regime kind of did a coup and took over the nation, they lived just like the Western world lived. Um, and, and like Israel, who's free, lived. And they long for that the people of Iran, we need to also pray. We've got many brothers and sisters in Iran that really need our prayers. And I know that they pray for us and they pray for Israel as well. So um, we cannot put pe everyone in a box. People tend to want to put everybody in a, into a box. That is not all people um, because we have, there are very, Many good people that live in Iran understand they are being oppressed by a government that is uh, really controlling every move they make. Uh, when you have communism, when you have Marxism, when you have when you have any of those types of governments, fascism, totalitarianism, uh, Nazism, all of that stuff. You, you are oppressed as a people. Does that stop the Holy Spirit from moving? No. Uh, as we know, and we've been hearing many, many people in Iran, Yeshua's been coming to, they are mourning him and saved. That is amazing, and that is our God, and all things are possible with God. And so uh, we have a lot of brothers and sisters in these oppressed nations, we have to keep them in prayer as well. Yeshua came to set the captives free. These Those people are captives in their own land. So, yeah, pray for them as well. Ezekiel 38, God's alliance invades Israel. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog on the land of Magog, 
chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, prophesy against him and say, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws. I will bring you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them splendidly dressed, a vast assembly with breastplate and shield, all of them wielding swords. With them will be Persia, there we go, Persia, which is Iran, cushion foot, foot, all of them with a shield and helmet, Gomer, and all his troops, the house of to Togomar, from the extreme north, and all his troops, many peoples with you. Be prepared, prepare yourself, you and all your company gathered around you. Be a guard for them. After many days, you will be summoned in the latter days. You will come against the land that has been brought back from the sword and regathered from many peoples on the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. But they were brought out from the peoples when all of them all dwelling, I'm sorry, when all of them are dwelling securely, you will come up, you will come like a storm, and you will be like a cloud covering, covering the land, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says Adonai Elohim, it will come to pass in that day that things will come into your heart and you will, you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land. Of unwalled villages, I will, I will fall upon the quiet people who live securely, all of them living without walls, having no bars or gates, in order to seize, spoil, and carry off plunder to your, to turn your hand against the waste places now inhabited, and against the peoples gathered from the nations who have been acquiring livestock and property who live in the center of the world. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all its young lions, will say to you, have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your company to plunder? To carry away silver and gold? To take away livestock and property? To make off with immense spoils? Therefore, son of man prophesies, say to God, Thus says Adonai Elohim in that day when my people Israel dwells safely. Will you, will you not know? You will come from your place out of the extreme north. You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses of great company and mighty army you will come up against my people israel like a cloud covering the land it will happen in the last days i will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me what i am sanctified through you god before their eyes thus says adonai elohim are you the one that i spoke about in former times through my servants the prophets of israel who, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them. In that day, when God comes, and that's Gog, G-O-G, comes against the land of Israel, it is a declaration of Adonai, my fury will rise up in my nostrils. In my jealousy and the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great earthquake. In the land of Israel, the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the fields, all creeping things that creep upon the ground and all humans upon the face of the earth will shake at my presence. The mountains will be thrown down. The steep places will fall. Every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. It is a declaration of Adonai. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will punish him with pestilence and blood. I will pour out rain on him. On his troops and on the many peoples with him, a torrential rain with hailstones, fire, and brimstone. So I will magnify and sanctify myself. I will make myself known to the eyes of many nations, and they will know that I am Adonai. The destruction of Gog, and that continues on with chapter 39. You, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, drive you along, and lead you up from the extreme north. I will bring you upon the mountains of Israel, and I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel. You 
all your troops and the people that are with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of birds of prey and to the beasts of the field. You will fall on an open field, for I have spoken. It is a declaration of Adonai. I will send fire on Magog and those who live securely in the islands, and they will know that I am Adonai. So I will make my holy name known among my people Israel. I will not let my holy name be profaned any more. The nations will know that I am Adonai, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, it is coming. It will be done. It is a declaration of Adonai. This is the day I have spoken about. The inhabitants of Israel's cities will go out and kindle fires with the weapons, shields and breastplates, bows and arrows, war clubs and spears. They will make fires with them for seven years. Now imagine, you know, this... Uh, why would they need to, to make fires with them for seven years? Um, and it makes you think in the future, and, and we shudder to think about that. Could that be a nuclear war? And they can't just do away with that. They have to wait um, to bury some of these things, to, to, do away, you know, to, to, to do away with them, because of possibly the radiation being so high. Um, it, it's, it makes you wonder why um, they, it, they would make fires with them for seven years. They will not take wood out of the field or cut anything from the forest, for they will make fires from the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them and look for those who looted them. It is a declaration of Adonai. Yeah, there's a lot of interpretation that, that's out there uh, regarding this, this prophetic word. On that day, I will give God a burial place there in Israel, the valley of the travelers east of the sea, it will block those who travel through, since they will bury God and all his multitude there. Then they will call it the Valley of Haman, Haman, God. So that's very, an, an interesting term. We know that you know Haman had a plot to annihilate all of our ancestors, and his plan was turned on his head. So God's coming in. God is coming in here, trying to destroy Israel. And we see that he is defeated and it's turned on his head. And he, it's so, so the valley of Haman Gog, the house of Israel will bury them for seven months in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them. It will be a memorial for them a day when I am glorified. It is the declaration of Adonai. So again, I, 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 I need to back up here. The seven months of burying them um, I, I, I meant to, not the, the seven years of the, well, it could be the seven years also of the weapons, but also that, that uh, who knows um, what this, the circumstances will be as to, to the weapons that are used in this war of Gog and Magog. So um, Men will continually set apart to travel through the land and bury the travelers returning on the face of the land in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months, they will make their search. When they travel through the land, if any sees a man's bone, he will set up a sign by it until the buriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. Pomona will also be the name of the city, so they will cleanse the land. So, you know, seven months, and you're seeing the bones. Uh, of people that really makes you think um, that it could be a, a nuclear war that is that is played out here in in the future, and you know with 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 Iran uh, having a path and, and actually having nuclear weapons, um, it isn't so far from from thinking that that could be a reality and we shudder to think about that because that would not be a real good thing um, as we know but you know these are prophetic words as well so it kind of leans toward that when you kind of look at what it, what it could possibly be when they're doing a search and they find a, bone, a man's bones um, and not just the body it's like you find the bones what what happened to to the body you know you start yeah, pondering on those things. You, son of man, thus says Adonai Elohim, say to every kind of bird and to every beast of the field, assemble and come gather from all around to my sacrificial feast that I prepared for you. 
a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. You will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of the mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, as rams, lambs, goats, bulls, all of the fat wings of Bashan. So you will eat fat until you are gorged, and you will drink blood until you are drunk for my sacrificial feast that I prepared for you. You will be filled at my table with horses and horsemen, with mighty men and all the warriors. It is a declaration of Adonai. Of course, when you when you read ahead here and think about that, I mean, that could be why uh, they're just finding bones. Um, because the birds of the air and the beasts are, are feasting on these people that are, you know, killed in battle. Israel will know, Adonai, I will put my glory among the nations. All the nations will see my judgment that I will execute in my hand that I will lay on them. The house of Israel will know that I am Adonai, their God. From that day onward, the nations will know that the house of Israel went into exile for their iniquity because they broke faith with me. So I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. All of them fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, now I will restore Jacob from exile when I have compassion on the whole house of Israel. I will be zealous for my holy name. They will bear their shame and all their disloyalty by which they broke faith with me. When they were living securely in their land with no one making them afraid, when I have brought them back from the peoples and have gathered them out of their enemies' lands, I will be sacrificed in them in the eyes I will be sanctified in them in the eyes of many nations. So then they will know that I am at another God, since I was I who caused them to go into exile among the nations, and I who will gather them back to their own land. Now we know um, Ezekiel was a prophet during the time of the exile of the people to Babylon, of, of the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom. I will never again leave them there. I will never again hide my face from them. For I poured out my ruach upon the house of Israel. It is a declaration of Adonai. The final reading from the Torah is from Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 1 to 21. And this is also a future prophecy by uh, Zechariah. Um, it's in, in end time prophecy when Yeshua has returned. And it, its title begins with coming to the Mount of Olives. And we know that's where Yeshua is going to return. Not anywhere else on this planet, but to the Mount of Olives in Israel. Behold, the day of that night is coming when, you, when your plunder will be divided in your midst. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to wage war. So this can also be referring to that Gog and Magog. Um, the city shall be captured, the house, houses ransacked, and the women ravished. Half of the city will be exiled, but the remainder of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then Ed and I will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in a day of battle. So he will bring them in, and he will fight them. In that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies to the east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split into from east to west. Now, that is when Yeshua is returning. This is actually probably the final battle, uh, the Arm you know, in Armageddon. Um, and so that, that takes place, and then Yeshua returning. Um, and it won't take much for Yeshua to certainly bound up the devil and and bind him up for, for a thousand years and do what needs to be done. Um, so now Yeshua, in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies to the east of Jerusalem. And the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a huge valley. Half of the mountain will be moved towards the north and half of it towards the south, and you will flee through my mountain valley, because the mountain valley will reach to Azel. 
and that's A-Z-E-L, yes, you will flee like you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then Adonai, my God, will come and all the saints with them, basically, the Kedashim in Hebrew. So if we've been raptured at that point and now he is returning, um, we're with him. In that day, there will be no light, cold, or frost. So this is this is after all the battles he has come, and um, there will be peace. As you're gonna, as, as we're gonna be reading on, in that day there will be no light, cold, or frost. We won't need it. Um, it will be a day known only to Adonai, neither day or night, even in the evening time there will be light moreover in that day living waters will flow from jerusalem half towards the eastern sea and half towards the western sea both in the summer and in the winter uh, adonai will then be king over all the earth in that day adonai will be a cod and his name a cod and a cod means one or a composite oneness the whole land from giba to Rimon south of Jerusalem will become like the Arabah. Jerusalem will be raised up and occupy her place from the Benjamin gate to the place of the first, the first gate to the to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. People will dwell in her and no longer will there be a ban of destruction. Jerusalem will live in security. Now this is the plague with which Adonai will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem, their flesh will, will rot while they are standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. Now this is why, you know, when we think about the Gog and Magog uh, war, that it could be nuclear because, you know, reading that description, I mean, it doesn't fit much of anything else, um, but that having, ha having had happened. It will happen in that day that a great panic from Adonai will be among them. Each person will seize the hand of his neighbor and they will attack each other. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the surrounding peoples will be gathered together. An abundance of gold and silver apparel, a, a similar plague, will strike the horse, the mule, the camel, the donkey, and all the animals in that camp. Then the survivors from all the nations that attack Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Adonai Sabaoth, and to celebrate Sukkot. That is, during the millennial reign, um, Yeshua will be here as the king. Uh, and people will have to go to Jerusalem to worship the king. That will be a mandate for everyone on this planet at that time. Furthermore, if any of the nations on earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Adonai Sabaoth, they will have no reign. I just want to say, you know, there is a practice now. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on in Israel this week, but generally, when not a war, um, and even last year, there were people from the, all over the nations that were there to celebrate the week of Sukkot. So, so the practice of going uh, is is beginning, you know, it's almost like that dress rehearsal, go to Jerusalem, because in the millennial reign, we will all be going to Jerusalem to worship the great king, the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, furthermore, if any of the nations on earth, as I mentioned, do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, at a nice of oath, they will have no reign. So it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, you're... You know, by that, by this point, we're all one, and we should all be one and worshiping Yeshua. And so that is what we're talking about with the millennial reign. If the Egyptians do, do not go up and celebrate, they will have no reign. Instead, there will be the plague that Adonai will inflict on the nations that do not go up to celebrate Sukkot. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate Sukkot. In that day, holy to Adonai will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the pots, and Adonai 
in, in the house of Adonai will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. In fact, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy to Adonai so that everyone who comes to sacrifice will take them and cook in them. In that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of Adonai Sabaoth. And that is the end of our half to our scriptures. And like I said, these these are kind of prophetic, you know, futuristic. So I think what, what we're going to do here is we're going to close out. We will pick up uh, the reading of Psalm 113 and 118 in the second part because we don't have as much scripture to read uh, in the second part. Uh, it's going to cut it really close here probably unless my online recorder is just off and <laughs> we could have done it. But I don't want to take a chance because it looks like we're at 41 minutes in the in, in the second hour so we're going to close this part out with prayer take a short break and then we will come back with part two father god we just want to thank you for the ability to come together for this this powerful word every every, every time we read your word it's powerful to us and we just thank you holy spirit for leading and guiding us father god we love basking in your glory, being in your presence, just being with you. We find that peace that passes all understanding when we are in your presence, no matter what is going on in the world around us. Father God, you know our concerns and you know what we're about to ask before we even ask it. Because you know everything about us and what's on our heart. But we're going to also continue to lift up the nation of Israel. We're continuing to pray for an end to, uh, end to this war. Peace in the region. Peace for Israel. Peace for Jerusalem. And the return of the hostages. And always... Uh, Yeshua, as you said, we are to pray for our, our enemies. And if there's any way that any of them can come to know you and be saved, we do uh, pray for them. You're not a respecter of persons and all creation is your creation and you love all humanity and we do understand that. But we also thank you for protecting Israel, the nation of Israel and our brothers and sisters that are in the Holy Land. Father God, we pray that all those who need to feel your presence and comfort, all those that are mourning, that, that need to feel you near them, that they do so. We pray for this nation as well in the United States. We are a nation that has also gone through quite a bit in the in the last in the in the last couple months just with all these hurricanes and we pray for those people that are mourning and trying to put pieces together and we pray that the help that they so desperately need can get can come through. Thank you. Thank you for for, for those that are able to be there and, and physically and, and help with the rescue and the rebuilding efforts. And thank you for provision that you provide for that to take place through, through Christian organizations and, and your people standing up to help one another because that's what we do as a family of God. We help one another when we are able to, and we pray one for another as well. Father God, we lift up this nation, this nation that so belongs to you. As we read, there was a covenant that you made with Israel. But the United States of America, our forefathers made a vow and a covenant with you. You are our God. We are one nation under God, no matter what anybody tries to tell us because our nation was founded 
on Judeo-Christian values and also was covenanted to you. Everything we know on this earth belongs to you. And you have control over everything. We, your children, are standing, standing firmly and proclaiming what was a vow made to you, this nation given to you, we are reclaiming that vow. No one can take that. And anyone trying will fail. We are one nation under God, and we pray that the wicked be removed from power from the top on down. And you know who they are, Father God. You know. And we're asking you, Father God, to replace the wicked with righteous leaders that look to you for leadership and sincerely pray to you, not just lip service and pretend to be part of part of uh, praying to you. But we want real, true praying leaders in place. We want godly leaders in place truly, truly look to you for guidance. We thank you, Father God, for hearing our prayer, and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Take a short break, and we'll come back with part two.